Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at VerifiedInvesting.com. All right, we just got the PPI data out. We're going to take a look at that in one second. Markets yesterday had an epic early sell and then a monster reversal. What are markets doing today? We're going to take a look in one second. So let's get right to that economic data here, bringing it up. I have all the numbers on my screen already for you guys. And what we could see is that, interestingly enough, what we saw the month over month numbers were a little hotter than expected on the producer side. Now remember, PPI stands for the inflation. It's producer price index. So it's the inflation on the producer side. CPI, which we got yesterday, that's the consumer inflation that you and I feel when we go out and we purchase goods. All right, so there's two different levels of inflation here, one on the producer side, one on the consumer side. Today was PPI. Today we got a number at 0.2%. Expectations were at 0.1%. So that is hotter than expected. Okay. Next was the core. The core, which is minus food and energy, that came in hotter as well. So again, two numbers that were not necessarily good. Now, these aren't ridiculously bad by any stretch, but again, it doesn't jive with allowing the Fed to cut 50 basis points next week. And we already knew as of yesterday, they probably would not be doing that. Now, the only positive here is that year over year came down better than expected. But again, those are year over year numbers. So what I'm focused on is these recent numbers, month over month, is going to eventually filter into year over year, right? As months go by, that becomes a bigger portion of the year over year number. So while we did see a PPI year over year at 0.7 versus 0.8%, so that was good, that was lower than expected, and core was 2.4 versus 2.5, which was also lower, for me, this right here is the most important. Now again, as you guys can see, we're seeing a little bit of a reaction here. The stock market is coming down just a little bit off of those numbers. Um, but again, we're not seeing a major sell. And again, you might say, well, why not? Well, number one, CPI is always more important to the market than PPI. Because if you're talking about consumers, consumers are directly affected by the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, prices of inflation on goods. Um, PPI is more on the producer side. So eventually that gets filtered through. But again, it's just one number here that again is not a major event. It's the, not a major market mover. All right, so again, we are seeing a little bit of a pullback. You might see a small pullback after that ridiculous reversal yesterday, but still, I wouldn't expect a massive sell-off today to reverse all of yesterday's gains. All right, so that's where we are right now. Again, yesterday was absolutely astounding, guys, if we focus in on the charts. In fact, I'm going to go to the NASDAQ here because the NASDAQ was remarkable in terms of its upside. So this is the daily chart of the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, again, we had that secondary dip in, or that big dip in early August. We roared back. We had a secondary dip a little bit lighter, a little not as far down. And we had that huge reversal yesterday. From the lows on the chart on the NASDAQ to the highs yesterday, it was almost 4%. It was about a 3.76% move up. Now, again, that doesn't mean the stock market was up that much on the NASDAQ. It's from the lows. So yesterday in early morning action, the markets were dumping precipitously. Now, you might say, well, why? Was it the CPI? And if it was the CPI, why did the markets turn around so abruptly? So it was a combination. Right? And I'm really bringing you guys the underbelly of what's going on. A lot of this stuff you won't hear in the mainstream media. But number one, it was the initial disappointment that the CPI numbers were not low enough to allow the Fed to cut 50 basis points. So essentially, the market was throwing a hissy fit, right? like a little adolescent kid. But what ended up happening and accentuating it and causing the markets to sell off as much as they did in early trading was the fact that the dollar-yen was starting to crash as well. It was coming down sharply intraday. Now, remember, in early August right here, that was what drove the stock market down. The fact that the dollar-yen was coming down, it was the unwind of the carry trade. Well, yesterday in early trading, that was starting to happen again. And as soon as the dollar yen started to reverse back to the upside and get a bounce, that's when the markets bottomed and began to move up. And also, I think it just calmed fears. People said, all right, you know, I guess it was a pipe dream to hope for 50 basis points, especially before the election. Um, so therefore, we're fine with it. Let's buy the dip. And that's what the markets did. So very interesting to see that, guys. But nonetheless, just explaining what's going on. So I'm just going to go through a couple charts here, guys. Um, Moderna's getting pounded today. Look at the drop on Moderna here. 
They basically came out and said, profitability is even farther down the line. We're struggling here. And the stock is getting absolutely blasted here down from $79 to $70. Now, if we flip over to the daily chart, what could be a good level on this? Well, really, you have to go back pretty far here. There is a gap fill just below 70, but really after 70, you're at 64. All right. So again, just showing you here, really, it's hard to see, but there's a gap fill right here. This is at a pierce of $70, which we're almost at now. And then there's double bottom at around 63 right here. That would be your next level. So if you're really aggressive, I don't even know if I'll take it, to be honest, because uh, mRNA, Moderna is a really volatile stock, but $70 will be some support. And then if it breaks through that, you could go down to 60. Now, 63, if it hit today, I'll trade that with the Apex Live Day Trading Room. There's no doubt about it. All right, what else do we have moving here? Signet Jewelers, um, really, you don't really think about this as a big market mover, but nonetheless, take a look at this. Great move on Signet here, um, up from about $77 yesterday to $89 today. That's a big move, again, for this jewelry outlet here. Now, if we go to the daily chart, is there a shortable level? And the answer is there is. The level for me that I would start nibbling on an intraday short here would be around 93.50. And you can see exactly why I'm finding that level, right? Right from here, here, right across here, and right in here. That should be significant resistance. All right, those are two stocks that are moving this morning. Um, we do have a move that's inching up on uh, NVIDIA. I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA fills a gap at around a 119.45. There's a gap fill. And I wouldn't be surprised if we come down and sell off of that. So we could go up initially and then come back in um, because, again, that was a huge move yesterday. Jensen Wong uh, did come out and give some positive comments on AI demand, which really just helped the markets muster that late-day rally, which was just nonstop to the upside. Uh, Bitcoin today, just covering these real quick, guys. Bitcoin today is flattish on the day. Not a whole lot going on here. We can take a look at my annotated chart. You can see it is up a little bit. Yesterday, it lagged the market, right? So yesterday, the stock market ended up with a big up day after a big start down start but bitcoin sold off and then only mustered a small negative close right so it wasn't performing as well as the stock market today it's it's trying to compensate and come up a little bit but overall remember bearish bullish pivot line you stay below it be very careful be very, very careful. It makes it very conducive to another rollover. All right, gold, let's see what gold's doing on that PPI data. It looks like gold's pushing up a little bit here in the early session. Again, not a big enough move to get us excited though, but if we do push up this 2550 trend line right up here, 2550, that's gonna be a very key level. But again, you are inching up on gold a little bit this morning. Silver, last I checked, was up just a tiny bit as well. Silver, again, creeping higher, gonna have resistance around 2960 right into this parallel channel. So watch that. If we come up to that, that will be the first level that silver will have to fight through if it wants to continue its rally back to 3250. Oil today, last I checked, was getting a bid. Not much. Again, for me, this is going to be a short if it can retrace to my scene of the crime breakdown right there. That's around $73. It may not get there. In that case, no big deal. As a trader, the discipline is everything. You want to be a good investor and trader, you can't compromise your levels. Technical levels are what make the decisions, not my wants, my needs, my feelings. Doesn't matter. I lose money when I abide by that stuff. So always remember that. It's all about the levels, the probabilities. Uh, lastly, we'll take a look at natural gas here real quick. And natural gas is basically flattish on the morning. It did confirm above this level, so it increases the odds of it going up here, which is actually a good sign because I am intrigued by a short opportunity right there. All right, guys, I've got to get going. I've got a big banking conference that starts in just a few minutes, so I've got to get running. A little short game plan today, but power-packed with information. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting Verified Investing. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.